Welcome to Catholic Current, where we give you an update on events affecting the church in the United States. From Washington, D.C., I'm Mara Moser. In his Angelus Address this week, Pope Francis once again spoke about the need for peace in Israel and Gaza. Once again, my thoughts go to what is happening in Israel and Palestine. I am very concerned and grieved. I pray and am close to all those who are suffering, the hostages, the wounded, the victims, and their families. I think of the grave humanitarian situation in Gaza, and I am saddened that the Anglican Hospital and the Greek Orthodox Parish were also hit in the past few days. I renew my appeal for spaces to be opened for humanitarian aid to continue to arrive and for hostages to be freed. Pope Francis has called for a second day of prayer and fasting for peace in the Holy Land on October 27th. In a letter to his entire diocese, Cardinal Pierre Battista Pizzaballa, Latin Patriarch of Jerusalem, encouraged people to participate in this day. He wrote, it will be a day that we will celebrate with conviction. It is perhaps the main thing we as Christians can do at this time. Pray, do penance, intercede. For this, we thank the Holy Father from the bottom of our hearts. You can read the Latin Patriarch's full letter online at lpj.org. October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Dr. Lori Presbis, Education Director of Catholics for Family Peace, spoke with Catholic Current about what we should know about domestic violence. I think we want people to realize that it's happening more than they may realize, that it's often hidden. But one in four women have experienced some kind of domestic, serious like domestic violence. And they also should know that domestic violence doesn't always leave a bruise. It's also uh, can be uh, emotional, um, spiritual, psychological, and, and financial abuse. And so people should be aware of that and that they should be aware that um, there are, there's help out there in the community for them and that the Catholic people can turn to that help uh, with um, confidence that it would be in line with Catholic teaching to seek help. We teach that there is hope, help, and healing available for people who are experiencing domestic violence. The uh, USCCB, our bishops, have a wonderful statement called When I Call for Help, in which they make very clear that it is not part of Catholic teaching to, to uh, do or to accept um, domestic violence, and that no one is obliged to stay in an unsafe marriage situation. You know, um, in my parish, Lori, the priest once gave this fantastic homily about domestic violence and really apologized to the parish for having never spoken about it before. What kinds of resources do you have for um, priests and parish leaders to kind of start that conversation? Uh, we, we really encourage priests to preach about domestic violence. And uh, we have on our website great resources that are all free. Uh, homily helps for preachers. We also have uh, brochures that can be downloaded and printed out for the uh, parish um, rack, um, restroom signs um, to, to post in men's and women's restrooms in the stalls. To, and our restroom signs come from a faith perspective uh, that, that we, we have this faith that teaches um, help and hope and healing and that the church is, is wanting to be helpful. So I think that, that priests and, and parishioners should keep spreading the word that we recognize that there is domestic violence happening in our community and that we want to be um, available if someone wants to turn to us for help. If you or someone you know is experiencing domestic violence, help is available 24-7 through the National Domestic Violence Hotline at 1-800-799-SAFE. Archbishop Timothy Brolio, president of the USCCB, is in Rome participating in the Synod on Synodality. 
He spoke with Catholic News Service about what young people are looking for from the church. They're looking for a, for a number of things. Uh, they're certainly looking for accompaniment. Um, you know, we've, we've created a, a, a society of individuals. And in my archdiocese, there is at least much more of a, a team notion because people have to work together in order to accomplish the mission. Um, but I think they're looking for a, a spiritual accompaniment um, and that um, in many of the most successful things that I see in the archdiocese are places where individual um, military members uh, take the initiative of inviting friends to come to mass or to go to a Bible study. And we've been trying to do something, uh, we call it the Team St. Paul, um, and we're putting lay missionaries in installations to invite Catholics to practice their faith. Um, because one thing I've learned dealing with young people is there's not a, a disinterest in religion, but the invitation, and especially an invitation by your peer, is essential. Um, and so that's one of the things we're trying to do as an archdiocese is invite people to practice their faith. As this year's Synod on Synodality adjourns this week, the Vatican released a letter to the people of God. The letter is approved by the Synod participants, who write, We hope that the months leading to the second session in October 2024 will allow everyone to concretely participate in the dynamism of missionary communion indicated by the word Synod. This is not about ideology, but about experience rooted in the apostolic tradition. You can read the full letter, which is linked in our show notes. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Catholic Current. You can find out more about any of this week's topics by visiting us online at usccb.org or follow us on social media at USCCB. I'm Mara Moser. See you next week. <music>